during the month of November, we've been talking about stewardship. This is a traditional uh, topic for churches during November. Instead of having a single meeting that four of you show up to, we're going to talk about stewardship a little bit in Temple Talks uh, each of the first four weeks in November. Um, we've talked about a couple of things, but the, the overall topic is God's uh, living in grace, God's generous people. Um, we've talked about a couple of things already. Last, the first week we talked about a life of thanksgiving, and that is realizing that all that we have, all that we are, is a gift from God meant to be used in thanksgiving to God. Without fear, without holding back, it is meant to be shared with God everyone around us. God's gifts are meant to be shared. They aren't meant just for us to enjoy. Unless we are sharing and are a conduit and thankful, fully thankful for what God has done, the things that God has given us are kind of a waste. Last week we talked about uh, a life of worship. How um, when we come together on Sunday mornings or wherever we worship and whenever we worship, we are telling God He is worthy of our praise, worthy of our devotion, worthy of giving ourselves fully and completely to Him. That's what worship really is about. The overall text that we've been using for this week is um, um, from 2 Corinthians chapter 8, where the Apostle Paul is uh, commending uh, to the church in Corinth the example of the Macedonian Christians. Macedonian Christians had heard about the troubles that the Christians in Jerusalem were having. There was uh, persecution, there was famine, there was struggle and trial. And Macedonian Christians wanted to know, how could we help? And so from this text, we get our third topic, um, living in grace, God's generous people, a life of generous service. From the example we have of the Macedonians, we see that that when you hear the word of grace, you have to respond. There needs to be something that takes place in your heart that causes you to reach out, causes you to open your eyes, causes you to see what God sees in the world around us. The Apostle Paul had been telling them about um, the struggles and trials of the early church in, in Jerusalem, and this was not around the corner. Um, on this map here, up, the, up in the upper left-hand corner, behind the eternal flame there. <laughs> Got to get that moved at some, some point. Um, we see Macedonia, which is north of Grace. Um, Corinth is south uh, and about two-thirds of the way up the map. Jerusalem is all the way on the other side, the right side of the map. It's about 1,250 kilometers away, give or take. That's about 700, 800 miles as the crow flies, probably a lot longer in the kind of traveling that they had to do in that era of, of the world. When we want to travel seven, 800 miles, we hop on a plane, we make reservations on a computer, get on a plane, and we're there in a couple hours. No muss, no fuss, no problems, less and maybe our baggage gets sent to China or someplace like that. But otherwise, generally, travel is a lot easier nowadays. When they wanted to travel in Paul's day, it was drama. You didn't worry about losing luggage. You worry about losing members of your family. You worry about losing your life. You worried about storms coming up. You worried about sea monsters under the, under the ships. It was a whole drama to do anything travel related that we today um, don't, don't really even think much about at all. We don't even think twice about it. We need to, to travel a thousand miles somewhere, we get on a plane, we go. Even driving is, is doable in, in just a day or so. In Paul's day it was weeks, weeks of travel, very dangerous, fraught with piracy, with thieves, with, with all kinds of drama. And the people in Macedonia, somehow had heard through the Apostle Paul, I think, and through uh, maybe uh, some of the people working with Paul, that there were problems in Jerusalem. When we turn on the internet, we look on our news uh, sites, on, on our computers, we can tell what's going on 
in Syria, we can tell what's going on in China, we can tell what's going on in Russia, anywhere in the world, we can know within sometimes moments what was happening. We can tell what J. Lo is wearing today. I mean, they had no concept of any kind of information technology like that at all. It was rumors and whatever uh, travelers that you trusted would tell you stories and that's, that was the source of news. It was real drama. But still, as far away as it was and as much drama as it was to help those people in Jerusalem, people in Macedonia, really, their hearts were open and they begged Paul for the opportunity to serve, to help out in some way. As I was thinking about this, it reminded me of uh, when we had uh, Hurricane Katrina in, um, that hit New Orleans so hard. You remember that. Everybody remembers that. It was tremendous drama, one of the biggest storms any of us had ever even really heard of. This is what New Orleans looked like not long after the storm kind of went and went its way. Also in New Orleans were Lutheran churches and Catholic churches and Episcopal churches. But some of us knew the pastors, or had at least met the pastors, of those Lutheran churches in New Orleans. And our hearts were open to them, and we just wanted to reach out. The Lutheran Church, our denomination, sent teams of people in to help with disaster relief and counseling, sent in food and medical supplies. It was a big drama, but it was a huge scale. But we were there. That's what generous service looks like. It means being open to what God is calling us to do and to be. It means being aware of what, what is going on around us. It means not being afraid of the things that we are called and invited to do. Being a Christian means living a life of generous service without regard for cost or difficulty or expense. Even if we have to get on a slow boat and go all the way across the sea monsters and, and the pirates and all the other drama, whatever it takes, God calls us to help and to be there for people.